So there you have a real nice arrangement of Lamb of God. It is in the key of G, standard tuning. I'll give you a low E just to get close to where I'm at. One of the things I like to do when I'm arranging a song for guitar is I try to make some variations, especially when I and repeating the first verse and chorus, I try to make the repeat a little different. Um, you can sometimes just play it a little bolder. Um, but this, what I've done here, the variation I've made is the first verse is a single note melody line. What I like about that is you play a single note melody line, and then when you come in with, you know, the, the whole chord, <laughs> It just sounds really nice, and all you've done is just played it normal, but you come in with a single note melody line at first, it just sounds really nice. So the first verse, there's not really an intro to this, first verse goes like this, measure one, into measure two. Now what I've done there in measure two, I could have easily done this, did the second fret with a pull off or a release to the open string, but instead I've come to the seventh fret of the fourth string. That way all three of these notes are ringing out together. All three of those. When you do it down here, you have to release that note and it stops to play that one. This way, all three are ringing out. I try to do that as much as I can in an arrangement to have notes ringing out into each other. It just has a nice sound and I, I try to incorporate that as much as I can. So that second measure goes like this. Fourth measure in, and we're playing two notes together, the open E and the C. There's two notes on your fifth measure. Now before I go into that sixth measure, um, all the way through this song, when we're playing that second fret, I'm sorry, second string, third fret, Try to use this ring finger because a lot of times when I do the G, I do not just the standard G, I play the D, third fret, second string with it. And it just happens to be part of the melody line quite a bit. 
So I just try to play that with the ring finger, set that G chord up ahead of time with that ring finger right there. You use it quite a bit through the, the song. And so we try to have that planted ahead of time. So let's go to the fifth measure. Sixth measure. Open string and followed by some harmonics. That just adds a nice little sound if you can do harmonics. That sounds just as nice down here. I like to do this. If you're not familiar with harmonics, all you're doing is you're just touching the string right above the metal bar, either 12th or 7th fret, and you're plucking that string. You're not pushing downward on the string, you're just barely touching the string. So that's the 7th fret, 3rd string. Come down to the 12th fret, 2nd string. And then back to the 3rd string, 12th fret. And then to finish out that first measure, second measure, and then you have that three note block right there, the two, the zero, and the two. What that is, that's the bottom part of a D chord. Most of the times when you play a D chord, you're confined to these top four strings. If you want a bass note in a D chord, one of the things you can do is wrap your thumb over top that second fret sixth string gives you an F sharp so what that is there on the, that second measure is a D with an F sharp and a bass but I don't need all the notes of that chord I just need those three so if I don't need it I'm not going to go ahead and fret the whole chord I'm just doing thumb 2nd fret, 6th string, and the index finger, 2nd fret of the 3rd, with the open 4th. 3rd measure, we've come down to this G. G note in the bottom with a couple open strings. Then it goes on, the 3rd measure. That first pickup in that 3rd measure is actually starting the 2nd verse. So let's do that third measure. Fourth measure. Now we've come into, we're bringing in all the notes of that chord into the melody line. So what we're doing is we're hitting the G, again, ring finger, second string, third fret. And then we're just walking up with our thumb here. Okay, that's the fourth measure. Fifth, pick up. While, while you're holding that whole G formation down, while it's ringing out, then you release that second note of the fifth measure. Then you gotta pick it up, play that second fret of the third string. Okay, let's do that fourth measure. Now don't forget, the next chord is a G, and go ahead and plant it with that ring finger. We're going to add the top pinky to that third fret too. So it goes like this, that fifth measure. That, that moves into this first measure here, but it sounds like this. Second part of that first measure. Second measure here is we're keeping the ring finger right there, bring this up to a C chord, leaving that ring finger third fret, second string makes this a C add nine, 
Second measure goes like this. Third measure. Do a little hammer on from the open string, open, open string, hammer on to the third fret. Back to the G, walk up. Okay, so we're, one thing about this song is, is it, is going quite a bit just from G to C to G to C. You know, look at this. It just goes between this G with that D and the C with the D. Okay, so that second measure is like this. Third measure. While that hole is ringing out, go ahead, put your finger back on the G, release to the second fret, as you see in your fourth measure there. Drop back down to the C add nine. First measure, pick up the ring finger, drop back to a G. on. Third measure in is, is now what I've done there on that third measure that second group of notes all those open strings second third and sixth open that's really the song calls for an E minor there but I'm not playing all those notes so I'm just hitting those open strings let's make it easy just hit the open strings and while that's ringing out you get set up for the bottom end of the D chord like we did before to the G with some open strings so let's play that first measure G third measure here E minor Bottom end of the D with an F sharp. So what we've done is we've gone over two verses. The first time a single note melody. Second time through we've rolled in the chords to it. Now this fifth measure is where we start the chorus. But just before that we've done this. Let's go ahead and leave it there, let it ring. Plant your ring finger, 3rd fret, 2nd string. Sixth measure, we, we're going to a C add 9. We're leaving that ring finger through this whole thing. A little hammer on to the 3rd fret, 1st string. That last measure goes like this. What I'm doing is I'm hitting those three notes. Walking up with the thumb and index finger. Okay. First measure. Back to the G. Second measure, we're doing a little hammer on. Keep that there, the ring finger there. We're back to the C at nine. Lift and hammer again. Back to the G. This again. C add nine on that last measure. First measure. This is your middle of their second measure. Open string E minor. Bottom end of the D. Now what I've done here in this arrangement is I put a little Be Still My Soul, uh, just a piece of that song, right in here. 
Um, I'm not sure why. I just, I just one day when I was working this out, I just, I just heard that song come right in there, and uh, it, it seemed to work out. So, the fifth measure where it says, "Be still, my soul," that ring finger is still right there, third fret, second string, and you hit the open G with it. Sixth measure. G, bottom end of a D, first measure, you're still holding that down, there it is again. So when you do this at the first measure, we haven't let go of that thumb down there because we're going to need it at the second measure. Then you hit the open B string. Hammer on the first, hammer on the third, back to a G. So that third measure there, you go from the open B and you hammer on third fret. You can pluck it if you want to. You're not going to get arrested and thrown in jail. I just, the way I play it, I just hammer it on. And that sets you up for the C at nine. Fourth measure. Now this last chord on that fourth measure is an A7. It's like an A minor. Pick up the ring finger. And then you, but you're on this G note at the top. Okay. Let's go back to that uh, third measure. C add nine. A minor seventh with the G on top. First measure, we've come down to a D. And then you hammer on from the second back to a G. That's what that two to the three is. Then we play the G chord and walk back up it. So I'm going to do that, Be Still My Soul, just so you hear how it's supposed to sound. two notes of that chord ends on that second measure. So we're heading into a, a repeat of the chorus here, but what we do is we do a little series of hammer-ons and pull-offs. Okay, what that is, real slow on your second measure there, you go from, you go from the second fret to the third, and then a series of hammer-ons and pull-offs. And then hammer on with your ring finger, third fret, second string. Okay, so real slow. Let's go back to that first measure. Okay. So practice that nice and slow, and it's actually pretty easy. Um, I have a tendency to play it too fast. I feel like i got to pull through real quick, but you really don't have to. It's, I think to get it right is about this speed. Now while that hammered ring finger is there, we're going to repeat the chorus. It says right there, third measure, chorus repeated, and it's like this. That's that fourth measure. That's the 
G. First measure, we've dropped back down to C add 9, keeping that there. Back to the G. Pinky to the top string, third fret. Second fret, first string. Third measure in, we're back to a C add 9. Back to the G. That's your fourth measure there. So let's go back and play those four measures again. It just goes from a C add 9 to a G to C add 9 to a G. First measure, we're right there on where we've left off. Open G string. Here's that three note E minor chord. Back to the bottom end of a D. Now if you want to, at this point, you can just end the song with a G. Okay? do that. But what I've done is I've thrown in an E minor here. And this time we are playing the two fretted strings at the second fret. And what it sounds like is this. And all I'm doing there, starting at the second measure, watch my, uh, watch my thumb here. I'm actually just walking up with the thumb and index finger. do that same thing. That started on the low E string. And while that's ringing out, then we do that same thing, only we up a string. Now if you notice above that, the word writ with all the dots, that means retard. Musically, that means to slow down. So it starts out a nice little pace, and then it winds down towards the end of that. it without any buzz in there. So what that sounds like in line to everything else. That's just holding the E chord down, walking up with your thumb. Then it goes back to this, your fourth measure. And here's another good place to stop with the G. But what I've done with the end of this is I've done like a little cascading scale of harmonics mixed with open strings. And it uh, sounds really nice. It's not hard. That first measure, you're starting out with the bottom, of the bottom end of that D chord. Typically, you would just resolve to a G. But what I've done is this. All that is, is you play a harmonic. These are all harmonics at the 12th fret alternating with an open string. So if you look at the tab, you have 12th fret harmonic at the third string. Then you play the open E string. Then you drop down to the fourth string. Oops, fourth string. Then you play the open second string. Then you come down to the fifth, fifth string, 12th fret. Play your open third string. 
sixth string, open, D string. So really what it sounds like is It's harmonics with open strings. Okay, just practice that nice and slow. It just has a nice ringing sound to it, and it's not hard to do once you get the get the hang of touching that string. Now, what I've done is when I play these first two notes, if you look at this right hand here. Um, I keep that same space between my fingers because I'm going from harmonic to open. I play the harmonic with the thumb, the open string with the index finger, and I keep that same space between my fingers as I come down like that. Harmonic with the thumb, open, harmonic thumb, open, harmonic thumb. Do it right. come down here and do the G bass note with a couple open strings. Now you can leave that alone too, but I've done one other thing. While that's ringing out, I've placed my fourth finger, third fret, like a G, and I do one more harmonic. These at the twelfth fret and seventh and sixth, I mean fifth, are called natural harmonics. It's, they're just there without having to fret anything. What I've done here, when I, as this chord is ringing out like this, I go ahead and plant that. Twelve frets above that, that's the third fret, twelve frets above that comes up to the fifteenth. And what you can do is, is do a little harmonic right there like that. Now those are called false harmonics because they're not just open, open plucked strings. You actually are touching, you're fretting a note 12 frets above it. Um, you touch the end of the string, you touch the string with your finger where you want it to go. There, I want my harmonic there. Typically it's right there. But uh, since I've th fretted three frets up there, I've got to come three frets down this way. And right over top of that bar, you touch it with your finger, and then right behind your finger is your thumb, so you just pluck that with your thumb, that same string that you're touching. Okay? So it goes like this with that last little touch harmonic. Sometimes they're called false harmonics. Sometimes they're called touch harmonics. So it sounds like this. Mm -hmm. 